We're here at the entrance to part of the Greenbelt Trail that runs through the Nisquab River State Park. There's some of it here behind me that goes on towards the uh, beach and out towards uh, Sunken Meadow. And behind Steve and the boat basin, there's another branch of the trail that heads out to San Remo. Look for the white blazes. That's what uh, identifies the Greenbelt Trail. And we're about to head down the trail through some of those woodlands that I talked about, and then we're gonna be going down to the beach and maybe be using this net and do a little bit of exploration of some of the creatures that live down at the seashore. So let's go take a look. Here you see the leaves of three. And in the fall, this becomes uh, beautiful oranges and reds and yellows, but don't go picking it for any lovely Thanksgiving bouquets. You don't want to be anywhere near this stuff. And if you're not sure if it's poison ivy or not, better safe than sorry. Leave it alone. All kinds of different plants everywhere you look. Some of them are native to North America and some of them are introduced. Uh, right here, we've got a black walnut tree. And that's a tree that was prized for its lumber by the early settlers. And this is the fruit that it produces, actually a nut. Inside this green coating is the black walnut from which the tree is gonna sprout. A really important source of food for all kinds of animals, especially like the squirrel we just saw. And the early colonists would use these nuts as a source of dye and polish for a furniture as well as for tanning leather. It's pretty interesting. It kind of has a lemony scent to it. If you look here in the understory, those are the plants that are growing uh, a little bit lower towards the ground, you'll see this plant here. And that's not native. It's called mugwort. And this is an invasive species. It's not good because it grows so thickly that it crowds out a lot of the native plants. So we kind of don't like to see this here. Yeah, it looks like we have one of the old sewer covers here. A lot of this area was clear cut. The forests that you see here uh, are relatively recent new growth, although they look like they've been here quite a long time. So the original forests that were here were logged out. They would have been oak, hickory, some of the black walnut, also American chestnut, which is uh, unfortunately a victim of a blight that was introduced from trees that came uh, over from Europe and Asia. So they're pretty rare now. But uh, a lot of these trees here are pretty new to the scene here in North America. For instance, you've got Norway maple growing in abundance, and that's not a native tree. Uh, you also have uh, black cherry, that's a native tree. And we're going to see some uh, eastern red cedar on down the trail. So, some natives and some recent additions. It's a uh, sassafras tree, and you can distinguish it by the fact that it has three different types of leaves. Let's see if I can find them now that I said that. Here's one with three lobes, and sometimes that's called the ghost. And let's see, here we've got one. It has no lobes, and that one's called the candle because it looks like a little candle flame. And let's see if I can find the catcher's mitt. The uh, bark uh, was used to make sassafras tea, and if you tear the leaves and smell that, it has a uh, really nice lemony scent. Here we are at the uh, fork in the trail. And here you see the green belt trail blazes on the tree. And you see one is on a diagonal to the right of the other. So that just indicates that if you want to stay on the trail, you want to keep to the right. And if the blaze was on the left-hand side, 
that would mean the trail goes to the left. We just came out of the woods and just in a sh few short feet we're in a totally different ecosystem. It's one of the amazing things about this park. And as we look across the water here, you can see, and I'm looking in the guidebook here, it's a good thing to bring. There's a snowy egret right there, two of them. And then across the way out on that sandbar, you've got a great blue heron and a great egret. All right here. All right, so we're down at the river now and we're noticing some of these grasses growing here. There are a couple different types. Right here, what you have is a plant called Spartina, and that's a grass that's um, adapted to live in a salt water environment. And it's a really important plant for creating a nursery for small fish, crabs, and other animal life that like to hide in these grasses when the tide is a little bit higher and they're partly submerged and also provides food for a lot of things like snails and so forth that are part of the food chain that's in the river here. If you look a little bit higher up the beach, you're gonna see some American beach grass and that's adapted to live in a drier environment near the beach and it's a really important plant for erosion control. Um, a plant that's kind of interesting, adapted to live in a salt environment it's called glasswort, and what's interesting about this plant is it was used by the settlers like we would use pickles. They would actually pickle it, and you can eat this. It's edible. Hmm. Tastes just like a good gherkin pickle. A little salty, crunchy. Not bad.